Have you ever wanted to learn how to 3D sculpt but been intimidated by complex interfaces and new software? Well today I'm going to show you the most approachable way to learn with a free web app and teach you all of the tools you need to get started. Hey guys, Hattie the Creator here, creating something new to share with you. And today we're going to be using Sculpt GL to show you the basics and teach you how to jump in and start sculpting in 3D space. In this video, I will go over and show you how all of the different tools work. And in the end of this video, we will have some sort of alien or creature head that we sculpted out together. So let's jump into Sculpt GL. So this is actually super, super simple. Just open up your preferred web browser and your preferred search engine. Type in Sculpt GL, S-C-U-L-P-T-G-L. You can put those together or add a space between that and the GL, it doesn't matter. And it's just gonna be this first result. You just click on that and you're gonna be thrown right into the 3D sculpting environment. But don't let it intimidate you. If you don't like the idea of using a web app to do 3D sculpting, you can actually download this as a free download and just run it as you would a normal application. There are a few risks running it in your web browser if your web browser crashes for whatever reason or if you accidentally navigate backwards with the mouse button or a keyboard shortcut or close the tab you do run the risk of losing your sculpt you can help mitigate this by saving often which you should do anyways but if you are worried about these things you can download the standalone version which works exactly like this web app version does so now that we're in the application you see you have this toolbar on the right hand side where you have three different sections that can be collapsed the rendering the topology the sculpting and painting we're mostly going to be using the sculpting and painting in this video but I will explain the different sections. Then we have this top options bar with the files where you can save and change some different values in the scene and the history and background etc. Now I'll show you how to navigate and to maneuver around your model. You can left click or right click in the gray background area. Just make sure you don't click on the pink clay of your model. And you can click and drag to maneuver around your model and see it from different angles. Tapping spacebar will bring you back to the front view that you originally start out in. And then you can move the camera around by holding down the alt button and clicking and dragging outside of the model as well. And again, this can be done with the left or the right mouse button so long as your alt button is pressed down. And then using the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out of your model. Also, Control Z works to undo and Control Y works to redo. So if you do something you don't like or on accident, you can easily Control Z and undo it. And now we will go through all of the different tools that this software offers. So if we go now to the sculpting and painting section and choose from the tool drop down menu, the inflate works exactly how it sounds. You're basically inflating a section of your model with air. It's as if you stuck a straw right inside of the clay and started blowing. A practical application for this might be to make some lips look more plump and full or like a nose to have more volume. It basically adds volume to whatever section of the model you have selected. You can easily adjust the radius of the tool to change the size of the area that you are affecting on the model. And it's important to note that every single tool in this application has two functions. You have the original tool and then you have the inverse of that tool. So the inverse of inflate would be to deflate. As you can see, there is a negative checkbox. If you have that negative checkbox ticked, then you will be using deflate or you can hold down the alt button as you use the tool and you will use the inverse of what you have selected. If you get used to using the alt button instead of having to go and tick the negative checkbox, you'll find yourself saving a lot of time and it's really handy. So as you can see here, I am using deflate and it's just making the ball smaller. It's kind of hard to see the practical applications for this, just doing it to a ball as the ball is just getting bigger and smaller, but inflate and deflate can come in handy quite a bit when sculpting. Next, we'll take a look at the brush tool. The brush tool is the one that is default selected when you open up the application. The brush tool just brushes on clay onto the model and then the inverse of that would be to take clay away. Adjusting the radius of the brush tool will adjust your brush stroke size, allowing you to add huge sections of clay or tiny little details. The intensity will adjust the amount of clay and, and the strength of your brush. As you can see with it turned up, you add quite a bit of volume to your model. Also by default when you start this application, symmetry is always turned on. This is great when you're sculpting things that are symmetrical like a face, but you can turn that off by ticking this symmetry checkbox here. And then you will turn off symmetry and be able to do things differently on each side of the model. Just a warning though, if you turn it off and do substantial amounts of work and then decide to turn it back on, as you work on one side of the model, it will do its best to keep things symmetrical, but it will not always do a great job once the sides are different. So I'm just going to pull out some clay here in the nose area of this model to show you the next tool. The next tool you can get to by choosing the smooth tool in the drop down or you can just hold down shift and automatically select it. It's one that you use pretty often so having the keyboard shortcut F shift is really quite handy. As you can see this just smooths everything out like rubbing your finger over it and just making everything nice and flat. 
just as it would working with your hands with play-doh or traditional clay go figure the next tool we will look at is the twist tool this does exactly what you might expect it takes the clay and twists it it's best used lightly if you go too crazy you can really mash up your clay and make some really weird and interesting looking things like this section on this guy's cheek is pretty chaotic and this is a bit accident prone if you use it a little too much if I smooth this all out you will see what's actually going on in there when the chaos is taken out of it you have this little swirly thing in the middle of the face here but this is great for making kind of like twisty ram horns and that sort of thing next we have the flatten tool which will just flatten out different planar areas of this sculpt right in the clay makes areas flat you can get a really cool stylized look to your model or just flatten up some areas that you don't want rounded it's got a wide array of uses I like playing with it just to kind of stylize things and make things a little bit more clay like less polished and eggy I went a little crazy with that flatten brush maybe let's go back in and smooth things out a little bit make the canvas a little cleaner you can see how well the shift button to smooth things out and the sculpting tools work together so you can easily add some forms and smooth things out and chisel some clay away smooth it out move around and deform your shape go ahead and play around with these tools and help your form come to life it's just one of those things that's gonna feel awkward for a while doing something new but as you do it more then you'll get more comfortable with it and it will become more second nature and you'll be able to develop some 3d characters and creatures and different things that you can even print sculpt gel is a great way to easily model and sculpt out things that you want to print on your 3d printer if you have one the next tool we're gonna look at is pinch which as you might have guessed works exactly how it sounds just like pinching that skin what this will do is define a crease in your clay your model I'm gonna use it around this little nose area kind of define that a little a bit better then I'll grab the brush tool and just put out some clay on some sort of eyebrows or something in the middle of this model and that'll illustrate better how this pinch tool works this almost looks like it's more of a tendon than an eyebrow hopefully this has given you some ideas and some practical uses for this tool and then holding down alt will do the inverse of this tool which is spreading things apart as you can see this is kind of spacing out this little ridge from the circle sphere like you're putting your fingers on there and just spreading it open the next tool we're gonna look at is the crease tool which the inversion will kind of indent and push in the clay but if you don't have the inverse selected it will pinch out little creases on the outside of the clay this is really good for adding detail and wrinkles to your models. I'm gonna go ahead and use it to kind of put a mouth on this creature that we've been playing with. As I've been showing you the tools on this piece of clay, it's kind of turning into something. A little alien head is emerging from the clay, trying to show us its true form. I'm gonna use some of the tools that I've already showed you to plump up his lips a little bit with the inflate tool and just play around and smooth things out a little bit. Keep your eye on what tool I have selected. Sometimes with the keyboard shortcuts and things, you can see that I am using different tools. And if you're trying to follow along and do something similar or make your own model, you can see how I'm using the tools that I've already shown to come up with some sort of creature and you can do the same things the next tool on the list that we need to go over is the drag tool these tool names are pretty intuitive it's just like it sounds you can grab a piece of clay and drag it out or you can drag it inward so it's an indent instead of an extruded piece of clay I'm gonna pull out a couple of different tentacle looking things on this creature pretty straightforward tool and as you can see, he's really starting to look like a creature. This is the exciting part when you start to see something in it and you want to bring it to life more and detail it out. I'm using the drag tool here to indent some eye sockets so I can put some eyeballs in there a little bit later. And now that this creature has some sort of horns or tentacles out of his head, I'm going to show you a more practical use of that twist tool. So as you can see, you can subtly put some twist and some spin into these horns and make them a little bit more organic looking. Maybe tentacle-like, like an octopus or something. Or like a twisted ram's horn. The next tool to show you is the mask tool this one you can also use by pushing the control button because it is one that a lot of people use pretty often so I'm gonna mask out a little section between his eyes here so what this will do is make it so I cannot adjust the area that I've masked out that little area that shows black it cannot be edited so if I use the move tool to pull up some clay all around this masked area I can add some little details in this guy and not affect that area that I masked out then you can just click this clear button to remove the mask and go back to normal Another thing you can do is mask out areas and then select the inverted area. So the opposite of what you've drawn and selected. To do this, just click this invert button. That way you can only edit the areas that you did draw on, which is pretty handy as well. So I'm gonna add a little bit of a ridge around these horns, pop them out a little bit. And with the mask, I have the peace of mind and the knowledge that I am only affecting those areas. Gonna clean up this horn with a little bit of that smooth tool make it a little bit cleaner now the next tool we are going to look at is the local scale tool what this does is kind of spherizes whatever you have inside your brush area I'm just doing this little section on his forehead you can't really tell but it's kind of blowing it up and inverting it into the circle if I make this brush size a lot bigger and do it to his face it'll be a lot more obvious and apparent what it is doing to this poor guy almost like he's looking in a distorted mirror or something so it's basically ballooning his whole face out or sucking it all in in a sphere shape 
in the shape of a sphere. I'm going to use it to make these horns come to a point a little bit more using the inverse of this tool, kind of squeezing it into the sphere. And the last tool in this list of tools is the transform tool. You can get this just by pushing E or you can select it from the drop down. What this does is it populates this little series of circles in the middle of your screen here. And with this, you can transform your tool and move it and rotate it on the different axes. So the X axis, Y axis, you can stretch it, move it up and down, move things back or forward, up or down. You just got to click on the different areas. So if you click on a square, you'll be doing a different thing and if you click on the circles you'll be rotating so this will just take a little bit of playing with to get it figured out pretty self-explanatory once you've used it a few times so now that we have gone through all of the tools I'm gonna go ahead and sculpt out this guy a little bit more add some details to him little veins and things using the tools that I've already shown you can just keep an eye on the tools I'm using don't get frustrated if your first try doesn't look like this guy I've done quite a few of these before and I have fun playing in here quite a bit so it's something I've invested a considerable amount of time into and just know that with your time investment comes improvement y'all get here y'all get here i promise okay so now i'm pretty happy with how he looks and i'm ready to add an eyeball into these eye sockets to do this go up to the scene drop down from the top menu bar and choose add sphere this will plop a giant sphere right into the middle of your scene don't worry it's all good we can move it around and manipulate it with that transform tool i showed you earlier scale it down to about the size of an eyeball and then just use the axis movers to move it right into place you can easily see which model you have selected and you are adjusting the other ones are kind of blacked out when they are not selected this will help prevent you from doing modifications to your other models while you're adjusting another one once you are happy with the placement of that eyeball you can easily duplicate it and add another one but first I'm going to change the material of this eyeball just so it looks a little bit more eye like you can do this from the rendering section there's a few different elements and materials that you can choose from and a few different settings that you can mess with until you get a look that you like I'm just gonna leave it this pearl material for now because it's white then I'm gonna go up to the scene again and go down to copy selection make sure you have the eyeball selected and not the face selected right now and when you click copy selection it automatically duplicates the shape right on top of it so it may appear like nothing happened but once you move one of them you can see that there are in fact two there tricky tricky scope GL you trying to get me you trying to get me now that I have those eyeballs in place I'm gonna play with the material of the overall face itself see if I can get something that looks a little bit more alien a little bit more fun a cooler way to display this model just messing around with these features is a lot of fun and sometimes you find something you love and sometimes you find a lot of things you don't care for that's just part of the process now I'm gonna jump over to the brush tool again and show you a cool feature that it has within it so just like Photoshop has brushes you can use brushes in sculpt GL as well the default brush you use is just a circle but there's also a square brush and then if you look in this text Texture section there is also a skin brush which gives you kind of some fun texturing you can put on your model to make it look a little bit more lifelike you can also import your own brushes if you just look up alpha brushes there's a bunch on the internet that you can find and use for free things like hair textures and veins and cracks and teeth dragon scales there's all sorts of ones you can find. I actually did a whole video about that. I'll pop a card out for that one right here where I sculpted a creature and then I used alpha brushes to make it look like it was hairy. So check that one out if it's interesting to you. It's a little bit of an older video, so bear with me. I was a little bit cringier back then. I've come a long way since then, I feel like. But the content's still good. As I'm adding final details to this model and polishing it up a bit, I want to thank my patrons who support me on a monthly basis and make videos like this possible. I don't make a ton of tutorial videos. I mostly do entertaining sort of videos while I show my creative process and show a finished piece to try to motivate people and to grow my own skills show some discipline in my craft but no matter what type of video I am working on I always try to finish it off with some sort of inspirational quote or message or some sort of life lesson or lesson that I have learned throughout my creative journey so if that sounds interesting to you go ahead and click that subscribe button come along the journey with us I say us because we are all creators I'm just one cog in the machine of this worldwide network of creative geniuses all these creative minds putting their efforts together to create their own worlds and creatures I know it sounds a little romantic and maybe cheesy but I just love the idea maybe I'm a bit of a dreamer but I wouldn't have it any other way now I have personally saved this file a few times as I've been working on it but I haven't really shown it in the video to save your model out just go up to file and export it as an OBJ or an STL whatever one you prefer it doesn't really matter it really kind of depends on what you plan on doing with it after this if you just want to save it so that you can bring it into here again later on and work on it some more any of these formats really work if you want to print it the STL is 
more of a standard file format for printing. And then if you plan on bringing it into another 3D software, different softwares work better with different formats. And I don't pretend to be any sort of expert on all of that stuff. I just like to sculpt. And now there's one more tool from that drop down that I did not go over. It was the paint tool. I just skipped over it because there wasn't really anything to show you. But now I'm going to show you that you can paint in this application and it's actually kind of fun. You don't get a lot of crazy details with it and you have to remember that you are painting different geometric shapes that are kind of hard to see zoomed out. But when you zoom in, you can see all of the individual triangles that your model is made up of. And you're really just painting those points. So if you zoom in and you want a really high DPI looking illustration, you're just not going to get that here, which is totally fine. Just the ability to throw down some quick color on these models is a lot of fun. I'm going to go with a yellow and a green color palette. This guy looks like he could be like an underwater creature. He looks like he comes from the planet of Naboo. And I'm going to kind of zoom through this pretty quickly, but there's different opacity settings you can do. And you can use the layer mask like I showed you earlier that prevents you from sculpting different areas. You can also use it to not paint certain areas. So if I wanted to mask out all of these horns and paint those separately so I didn't accidentally paint the face, you can do that. In this case, I use it for his lips, but it's a really cool tool and it's a lot of fun to kind of have your models come to life a little bit and put a little bit of personality into them with some color. And then here I'm playing with the materials again. I didn't really play with them a lot earlier, but there's some really cool chrome looking ones and some different weird ones. The one that's kind of rainbow color is one that you would use for different rendering. I don't know a ton about that stuff, but yeah, there's a lot of weird things in here and cool things in here to play with. And I want to show you this really quick. If you're wondering if SculptGL is even worth learning or if it's even that powerful or what, what are the limitations? What can you even do with it? There's a gallery on the main website that has a whole bunch of different things that different people have made of all different levels. There's even a couple of mine in here, which is kind of cool see but yeah it's a really versatile tool it is a really entry level tool you can't animate with it you can't render out high quality images from it but you can take your models that you sculpt here and bring them into other applications that can do those things really the sky's the limit this is just a really cool rudimentary entry level application that you can use to sculpt out creatures and models really quickly but really it's like having your own sculpting studio right here in your web browser on any computer wherever you are and i think that is pretty damn incredible put in my french but uh, that was not the French, that, that was the English. Hey, uh, you know what I'm talking about, watch your mouth, Frenchy. But anyways, it's a really cool tool, I'm a fan. This is not a sponsored video, I just really like the tool and I'd like to promote it as much as possible because for me, it was a really good entry level tool to start learning some 3D and to start gaining some confidence in it. 3D sculpting is something that I have been interested in a really, really long time. But when I was a young teenager, the tools just weren't there. I got my hands on some pirated copy of Maya and I opened it up and it was just so intimidating I didn't know what to do and I didn't have resources to learn and I quit because I was just so frustrated. Really now with this tool and with the ease of access to it and the learning materials available to you on the internet and this video here, there's really no more excuses. If it's something you want to learn, just learn it. As Shia LaBeouf said, do it! And really it's sound advice. Hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out and watching this video. If you learned something and found value in this video, please consider subscribing. I do mostly drawing videos, but I do like to get into 3D every once in a while. I have a lot of fun playing with sculpting software, sculpt GL especially because it's so accessible and easy to use. Hopefully after this video, it's something that you find yourself playing with too. It's a lot of fun and you can create some really cool stuff pretty quickly with it. Remember you two are creators, keep on creating. Creativity is thinking up new things, but innovation is the ability to do new things. That quote came from Theodore Levitt. Maybe after this video we can all be a little more innovative with our artwork and delve into some new mediums. If you guys create something in Sculpt GL as a result of this video, I would love to see what you guys came up with. Feel free to email me your creations to hattythecreator at gmail.com. This has been Hattie the Creator and I will catch you guys on the next video. Take care guys. See ya.